So Michael is part of our product uh, management. management team and he will be talking now about analytics and you have some very exciting use cases yeah. for us and actually he asked me not to talk too long because he will need the time and that's why I'm off. Thanks Sebastian. So I had a lot of good, very good discussions the last two days together with uh, some of you guys um, referring to analytics. Um, but okay, before I step into the products, what we have on my yeah. sphere, you know. the first question I will raise up is always the same. What are your challenges? We have three phases there to identify. First of all, you have connectivity and monitoring phase. The challenges there are a little bit different. From product uh, perspective, we provide, um, especially for the, this phases, very uh, fast possibilities to create the first insights exactly for the existing data, what you provide or get from, from your end assets. The analytics and uh, prediction phase is more on building customer-specific models, solving some problems from the field, from the performance. Or if you are more on the next step, on the next level, that means you already um, started to think about new business models or you think about new products you want to sell to your customers, then we have the digitalize and transform phase where we have different kind of products on that. Saying that, the overview of our portfolio starts normally with the connectivity phase. It's very important to connect Siemens uh, products or you can connect uh, third-party products, you can connect um, cloud uh, solutions, you can add uh, enterprise applications to, all, to bring all those data centrally to a storage. Once the data are there, it's up to the user, it's up to the stakeholders within your organization, which is the right tool which can be used uh, it identifying and also solving the problem. So we have on the uh, layer that for the user perspective, they do not want to code. We have different kind of tools there. For example, the fleet manager is the first monitoring system where you can create insights or doing some rules based on if a threshold is going uh, over a certain kind of value. The visual flow creator is more for the, if you want to build a workflow and you want to process those data and send it back to the IoT. So creating an event, combining different kind of values there. The uh, visual explorer is a BI tool based on Tableau where it's possible within the tenant creating dashboards for different kind of users and providing those for a manager, for example, or for the operator of a plant. The product intelligence is a big data analysis tool where I can give you an example of, of, um, of a real case scenario. On the right hand side, that means the toolbox for developers and uh, data scientists, we provide two possibilities for the developers. We created six APIs so that the developer can focus on building the UI and underneath they can call via an uh, uh, API those uh, functionalities. And predictive learning is the application for the data scientists solving business problems and providing predictable models to a runtime environment. I want to start with product intelligence which is the big data analysis tool that we have um, on MindSphere. Big data, what does it mean? The data quality function provides po the possibility um, to connect more than 35 different sources to bring also information from the products, from the design phase, from the production phase, and also to match those data with information from the field, from the performance. And you have to contextualize those data. Once the data are within one storage, then you can start doing the analysis. Um, as an example, we have around about 18 um, billion data points putting into that environment. The performance analytics is more for defining that the user can define KPIs which are interesting for him. He can monitor those APIs. He gets alerting on those APIs. And when the alerting is done, he can do the root cause analysis. So for example, if you have um, a, a problem on, um, on an asset and you identify the root cause that the problem will be maybe the, the delivery, um, some in the, the, the supply chain, there's a problem. It's very pretty easy to, uh, to analyze all those uh, let's say 80 billion data sets within a few seconds. And the contextualized search 
helps you also some doing some um, further steps on the evaluation. The data visualization is also built on Tableau, so the user can bring out those data into their, an environment where he can create um, own dashboards for different needs, also depending on the stakeholder that, that he provides those uh, dashboards. Coming to the development environments, analytical APIs, I mentioned it before, are for developers, that they can build application and provide those applications to the application store, to the app store. Starting with the trend prediction. Trend prediction is something where you can predict, you can uh, train a model with data from the past to identify a data point which is in the future. And if the data point is over a certain, over a certain um, value, then you can do something. The anomaly detection is a clustering-based algorithm. I will give you an example. Um, we have, we had from from business perspective, we had a problem on the on the gas turbine uh, and the pump of the gas turbine. If this there is an outage of that, um, you can um, lose a lot of money. So what we did, you can detect temperature and pressure, for example. Um, you you have to train a model. First of all, you need a data set which is good. Then you have to train the model. The model is stored in the, in the API underneath. And then you can use new data matching against the already trained model. And you can see if there are anomalies or not. And if there are anomalies, yes, then the user can do some kind of events um, using the other event management API, for example. KPI calculation is for building application. Um, I will explain it like this. Feed the API with the information of your machine about availability, planned downtimes, unplanned downtimes, and the calculation, cal calculation underneath will be done by the API, and the app can be built, and the dashboard can be built by the developer. Event analytics is the first functionality to do some event search or the top 10 uh, failure event search within your assets. Signal validation is for validating if an incoming data is valid or not. And with the signal calculation, for example, if you identified that there is a missing data point, you can calculate what is a, a common uh, data point instead of that. Now coming to the predictive learning part. I mentioned it. This is for data scientists. So it's not that easy to explain. So I will try to do it like a, uh, 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 to explain it uh, from a use case perspective, which I got from the energy management uh, colleagues. So they had from the past uh, three months, they had a, uh, the feeling that the energy consumption was a, a little bit high. Um, they talking to the data scientist and telling them the story. What the data scientist did was using predictive. He brought out of the IoT storage, that means data preparation, the um, amount of energy of the small plants into an environment where he can work with. We call it workspace. Within the workspace, he just going through the different kind of data, identifying if there are some, if the data quality is good or not. And he can do some uh, further statistics. Within the workbands, that's the environment for data scientists. Um, that's a Zeppelin notebook, but uh, for, for the office user, for example, the, the ones who want to uh, use Word or, or Excel, the data scientists are also, let's say, a little bit special. Uh, all the data scientists want to use their own tool. We decided to have the Zeppelin there. So coming back to the use case, then the data scientist was coding in Python a code, and he wants to do some root cause analysis to coming back to the operator and telling them he was using some machine learning algorithm, uh, anomaly detections, and he identified three patterns. First pattern and the second pattern was, was very easy to understand also for the operator, um, because it was the second, the first of, of January. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. The two patterns were um, not a pattern from operation perspective. But the third one was, in, was interesting for them. They, tell, they, they had a look into the maintenance um, planning, and they saw that on Saturday, for example, was a, a high energy consumption. And the reason um, was a cleaning company um, 
forgot to switch off the lights. But what I want to say is not to, to understand identifying patterns. Um, yeah, it, we, we identified three patterns here, but only one of the patterns was interesting also for the business uh, user. And this is the, the key that the data scientists and the, the, the experts, the domain experts, the maintenance colleagues or the, the operators, they have to bring in their knowledge as well to identifying exactly the value of the different models. Once the model is created, then the next task was pretty easy. They told the data scientist, please give me this model only with this pattern. Bring this into my environment. If new data are coming in, I want to have an indication. Give me a message, something so that I, that I can uh, create further actions um, to, to my operator that he can go to the plants solving this problem up front. Saying that, if you have any questions or if you want to discuss your use cases, your problems, please visit me, visit us on our uh, booth stuff over there. I'm very happy to talk to you later. Thank you.